Thank you very much, Mr. Underwood, uh, for your testimony. And thank you for all of your statements, for your opening statements, uh, and for your contribution to this hearing. We'll now proceed under the five minute rule with questions. Now begin by recognizing myself for five minutes. Uh, it is important to realize how many people we have incarcerated and the desire for them to start anew or to contribute to society. So Osler, help us understand the impact of soliciting uh, the uh, local prosecutors and giving that considerable weight for someone who's been incarcerated and has a whole new attitude and change of life. Can you explain that conflict of interest uh, and how other clemency process models would prevent that conflict? Yes, thank you for that important question. And one thing that I want to make clear is that I don't think anyone is talking about cutting DOJ completely out of the process where they would not have a voice. It is important that DOJ has a voice and people who know what the, um, the core imperatives are there. However, I will say this about going back to the local prosecutors, that I was an assistant United States attorney. And there's something that prosecutors know and that is that there's a deep moral commitment to your work. And that is a good thing. Because when I'm asking for a sentence to someone like Mr. Hernandez, I'm standing 20 feet away from someone and saying that I want that person to miss their child's wedding, to not be there when their mother dies. I'm sorry, my time is short. I have other okay. questions. Well, I'm I so will sorry. say, sorry. Okay, I, just that. There is a deep commitment that that person has, and it's tied to the moment of the crime. And it doesn't take into account how people change over time. These petitions often are 20, 30, 40 years later. And that deep commitment um, is tied to a different point in time, doesn't account for the change in the person's life, including some of the changes that we heard about from some of the other witnesses here. Thank you. Uh, Professor Barkow, tell me, um why you support the creation of a task force, of the border commission very briefly. I do have other uh, witnesses that I want to question. Thank you. I'm in favor of the creation of an advisory body that exists outside the Department of Justice. One, because it'll help alleviate that duplication of effort um, and get rid of some of the bureaucracy. Two, because it won't have the same conflict of interest and the people appointed by the president um, could have relevant expertise in the kinds of questions that come up with clemency and evaluating how that person is today. Um, and three, because I think when you have a specialist body like that, um, it can be more efficient and get uh, petitions processed more quickly and they can be a good resource for the president. I should say, I don't think any of this replaces the president's authority. I agree that it is 100% within the president's prerogative to grant or deny, but what it would do is provide the president with better sources of information and an efficient process as opposed to what the president is getting now, which is effectively nothing, uh, which is a backlog of 18,000 people. They're not getting a yes, they're not getting a no, they're not even getting a maybe. They are just sitting in some kind of a purgatory and creating an advisory board would help cut that red tape, get rid of the conflict and give the president better advice. Thank you so very much. Ms. James, I think we started out by hearing thoughts uh, that uh, all we might be doing is adding to the criminal element and that we might be uh, creating danger. Uh, and I do want to pay tribute to our law enforcement during police week. We all want to be safe. But you made a very important point that I know as I've been working with incarcerated women, many of them are there for conspiracy charges that impact women uh, who are grabbed into the system and given enormous thing. And they, of course, that completely implodes in many cases as do the fathers, the family. Would you comment on that and that releasing these women would be a contribution to society, not a detriment? Thank Ms. you. James? Thank you. Thank you. I would like to comment on that. I, was a, I am a former criminal defense attorney. I stood in countless courtrooms defending women, men, uh, children. I'm also a formerly incarcerated woman that served a sentence inside of a federal prison. Um, Madam Chair, but for clemency, uh, but for conspiracy in the federal prison system, the majority of the women who are currently incarcerated in our federal prisons would not, could not justify the prosecution 
indictment, and sentencing at the lengthy sentences that these women received. Conspiracy is something that we must take a very deep look at. We have been doing a years-long uh, research study with incarcerated women in the federal system. It causes egregious harm, disparately impacts women, particularly women with children, separating them for unconscionable periods of time for sentences that otherwise could not be justified. General ladies, uh, time has expired and my time has expired. Thank you very much. Um, now, uh, my privilege to yield to the ranking member, Mr.